I have only ever owned one line of consoles and that is the PlayStation series. So I had the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3, and now the PlayStation 4. And yes, I consciously made the decision to not upgrade to the PS5 because I was wasting way too much time playing video games especially during COVID when COD came out. Shortly after, I became the proud owner of a Nintendo Switch that was gifted to me. Now, this console was used exclusively to play Smash Brothers and the two Legend of Zelda games that are exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. And if you haven't played those games before, that's reason enough to pick up this console because trust me, they're some of the best games out there. But having completed those games and making the conscious decision to not switch to the PS5, I figured that my gaming days were long behind me. And that was until Asus sent me an email asking me if I wanted to test their new Rogue Ally gaming console. And something about it being a handheld really changed my perspective on gaming because although I loved the Nintendo Switch, there was very few games for it that I actually truly enjoyed playing. And once I beat those games, there was nothing left to do on the Nintendo Switch. With the Rogue Ally, this opened up the possibility for me to play the games that I actually loved like FIFA and NBA 2K on the go and wherever I went. At my age, now that I'm 31, it's just not feasible for me to lock myself in my office all day playing video games. So the ability to be able to take my games with me anywhere was a really interesting proposition. So let's start off by talking about the external body of the Asus Rogue Ally before we head into the internals and the UI. You get your four face buttons like you do on any other controller. You have two joysticks, you've got the D-pad, you've got various menu buttons over here and a dedicated armory crate button which we'll get into. You've got two bumpers and two triggers but the most interesting part is that you also have two triggers on the back of it as well. Now typically to get these on a gaming controller like the Xbox controller or the PlayStation controller you have to purchase something called a scuff controller. These back panels usually give you an additional advantage when playing specific types of games. So for example if you're playing a shooting game like COD you're able to map custom buttons to these back two buttons like jumping or sliding or anything like that and this could give you a competitive advantage when gaming because you're able to reach certain functions pretty quickly. The Asus Rogue Ally has a 7 inch full HD IPS panel with 120 hertz refresh rate and I will say the screen on this is absolutely beautiful when gaming. It also has built-in storage of 512 gigs and 16 gigs of RAM. Essentially this machine is an absolute beast. There are also two volume rockers on the top, a power button, it gets power from USB-C, and there's also a slot for a micro SD card. And with the externals out of the way, let's turn it on and talk about what's inside this absolutely awesome gaming console. First of all, this is a full Windows 11 machine, so it literally has a browser built in, file management systems, you can open up Microsoft Excel, you can surf the web. It is literally no different than a laptop, which is a powerful capability of the Asus Rogue Ally. I'm actually considering doing a video in the future where I take this with me on one of my trips. I leave my MacBook at home and I treat this as my sole laptop. So I'm thinking of doing one of those day in the life videos with the Asus Rogue Ally as my main laptop. It's really that powerful of a machine at completing computing tasks. The Asus Rogue Ally also comes with something called Armory Crate installed. And basically what this is, is that it's a UI that houses all of your game across all of the different platforms that you've downloaded. So one of the main advantages of the Asus Rogue Ally is that you're actually able to play games from Xbox, PlayStation, or Steam. You no longer have to decide between buying a specific console if you're a huge fan of a specific game that's only available on that console, like Halo on the Xbox or God of War on the PlayStation series. Now you can play any game that you want from a single console. Additionally, the ergonomics of this controller and holding this device as a single controller and screen in one has been pretty fantastic to play with. I've played FIFA on hours on end and my hands haven't cramped. I've definitely gotten a bit sweaty from the pressure of playing FIFA seasons online, but other than that, there's been absolutely no cramping or lack in performance from the controller's build. Additionally, since this is a Windows 11 machine, you do have the ability to download emulators to download any games from basically any single console from the past, so this can really help you take a trip down memory lane if you're interested in playing some older games. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, having the ability 
ability to play these games anywhere, like in my bedroom, in my office, in my kitchen has been a real game changer. Obviously you need a Wi-Fi connection to play online. So games like FIFA have been mostly limited to my home. And if I want to play something in my car, I'm mostly limited to offline games like Hollow Knight. Also, when you purchase the Asus Rogue Ally, Asus has done something pretty clever. You get three free months of Xbox Pass. And this basically lets you download games for free from a huge library. So even if you don't have any games, when you buy the Asus Rogue Ally from PlayStation or Xbox, they've done this. So Other games that I had missed out on during that time where I took a break from gaming. So it was really nice for me to see what I had missed out on being able to play those games completely for free. Now don't get me wrong, there are definitely some downsides to this machine. I lost 10 FIFA season games in a row and that was because I couldn't move in the game for whatever reason. Literally my players would not move, I couldn't pass, everything was just super laggy and it was not working. So it took me a while to realize that the device was actually not in performance mode. Unfortunately, I had already dropped three seasons by the time that I figured this out. But once I did switch the machine back into performance mode, the game was operating smoothly and perfectly as it should. So once again, there was no issues once I changed the device into its performance mode. There's actually a dedicated arm Memory settings button so if you just tab this you get this menu over here and this lets you change various settings like the brightness the volume picking what kind of keyboard you want if you want to show your desktop and obviously the most important thing is being able to change the operating mode now there is a downside to performance mode it's not all sunshine and rainbows and the downside is that the device gets extremely extremely hot and now most of the heat dissipates through the vents on top so even if you accidentally touch them it's not hot enough for you to burn your Yourself, but it's definitely hot enough for you to notice a couple nights ago I was actually trying to play FIFA under the covers in bed because I didn't want to disturb my wife as we were sleeping and of course because I have the Asus rogue, rogue ally I had the ability to play in bed and I'm not kidding it was a total sauna down there I was literally sweating within a single half time of FIFA and I had to come out and basically go to a different room to finish my game. And the heat is not the only downside. Performance mode also comes with one more big drawback. It eats up the battery like crazy. Now if I play a low performance game like Hollow Knight which doesn't require much power, I can run the Asus Rogue Ally off of power for about 2 hours. But if I want to play FIFA online in performance mode on this without being plugged in or anything, I can only play about 3 games until the battery is totally washed out and on that third game I'm struggling to actually finish the game and I might have to plug in for power just so I don't get disconnected from my opponent and get that automatic loss. Now if you're going to play high intensity games like that and you're going to have to end up plugging yourself in anyways or playing near an outlet, at that point I might as well get a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox so I have the performance of those consoles which are dedicated, dedicated gaming consoles and play them on a bigger screen like a TV. So I do think the battery life is a big drawback of this if you want to play high performance or high intensity games like FIFA Online. You could also look at it from the flip side and think that hey if I'm only able to play 3 games of FIFA until I have to plug in, it is going to limit my playing time and that way I can get back to being more productive but that's not an excuse for the device not having the best battery performance. So the question becomes, would I recommend this for anyone to purchase? And I think the obvious answer is yes. Despite the shortcomings of this device, it has me gaming again, which I'm really excited about and was something I did not think was going to happen again, at least not this near into the future after I decided that I was going to stop playing video games and not upgrade to the PS5. Just the ability to be able to take my games anywhere with me is totally unmatched. And the best part is, is that this device is actually $200 off right now. And again, like I mentioned previously, you get the three free months of Xbox Pass. And if you use my promo code, which I'll have written at the bottom of the screen, you'll get an additional $50 off. So that's a total of $250 off the device and three free months of Xbox Pass. I think it's really hard to go wrong with that deal and you definitely won't be disappointed. That's all I have for this video. We don't really talk too much about gaming on this channel but i'm starting to get more into it because it does fall into that niche of tech so if you guys want to see more videos like this definitely let me know but other than that i'll see you in the next one and until then keep creating